Hello everyone, my name is Yazid. As Mike said, I'm a PhD student under the supervision of Dr. Sebastian Duterte from IBMM Montpellier and Professor Nicola Ingerberg from Cryab Laboratory in Perpignan. And today I'm going to talk about my thesis topic on synthesis and characterization of neuconotoxins isolated from, new, isolated from Polynesian consonants. First of all, I would, I would like to introduce consonants. Consonants. Consonants are marine venomous animals that, during their evolution, develop a high potent venom to capture prey or to defend themselves against predators. These venom are made up hundreds of small peptides called conotoxins. These conotoxins are very diverse and can targeted a large range of pharmacological receptors like nicotinic acetylcholine receptors, voltage-gated ion channels, or other receptors included in, in, in bio, biological process. Nowadays, we know that there are over 700 species of consonants, and each of them can express more than 100 conopeptide conotoxin in their venom, making them valuable resources for biological interest for therapeutic potential. So for my, pro my project thesis, we are focused on only on, poly on Polynesian endemic consonants from French Polynesia. And for the rest of the presentation, the consonants, the conotoxin I will present to you, were identified from these two consonants, Conis Adamsoni and Conis Gorgon. Here we have the two conotoxin we identified from these two consonants. AD1A was identified from a from Conis Adamsoni and Conis and GA1A was identified from Conis Gorgon. These two display a sustained framework related to alpha conotoxin. Alpha conotoxin are related known to be targeted nicotinic acetylene receptors, so and they have two decified bond bridges. So for my thesis topic, we are interested in synthesizing this particular, particular cyclic peptide bearing decified bond. To achieve this, we conducted two different folding strategy. So the first one is the simplest one, which one included the, the synthesis of the protein precursor, linear precursor of a conotoxin, and all the cysteine are, all, all the cysteine protecting group are, have been removed to get just the tire function free for oxidative funding. The second one is a oxidation reject selective approach is included a pairwise oxidation of the, of uh, our disulfide bond to to lead to the alpha conotoxin framework. So we started with uh, oxidative folding on GA1A and all the, all the conditions we tested on GA1A give us one single isomer of uh, conotoxin, but at this time, we cannot know if we have the right isomers. We, we did the same thing about AD1A and we show that it show, it seems that for AD1A it was very high difficult to get the one the two disified bond and we have to try a lot of a lot of condition, various conditions to get at least two different isomers here for AD1A. So at this time we didn't know which one was the best one for the right isomers. Uh, between these two obtained here. So we switch with the ratio selective approaches, we can lead to one single isomer. So to do this, we synthesize our linear precursor with uh, ACM protecting group on cysteine 1 and 3. After DSF treatment, DSF is an oxidative agent who can promote disulfide bonds. So after DSF treatment, we, we formed the first DSF bond here. 
after removal of the ACM group and in 16.1 and 16.3, we add a lot of uh, DSF to form the second decephal bond and it gave us one single isomer here. We can see if with, with these uh, regioselective approaches, it takes less than 10 minutes to have one isomer compared to the oxidative folding, it takes days or weeks to have the, the right isomer of the native conotoxin. We did the same thing with ad -Wene, and it seems to be very effective with this one pot regioselective approaches. The, at the end of the reaction, we obtain this isomer here. Two isomer, but this one here, it's uh, the same one, but with conformational diverse diverses because of the proline proline sequences we have on this sequence. In 30 degree, we have peak picking of the main peak. I will explain later why we have this uh, kind of isomer for with regio selective approaches. If we compare these two approaches for gay one all the oxidative funding led to the right isomer here. And we can see it's matched with the regio selective one. But for ad most of the regio oxidative funding led to the ribon isomer. Ribon isomer is when we connected the decipher bond between cysteine 1 and 4 and cysteine 1 and 2 and 3. But this one is not interesting for us. This is why regio selective approaches give us major global native conotoxins. So we were wondering why with oxidative folding, it gave us this ribbon isomer. We know that with oxidative folding, the thermodynamical stable isomer are formed. So we want to predict the disulfide bond of these uh, two conotoxin. We run out on alpha fold, and it gives us this structure, which is the more stable one for ad one here, here we can see that the cysteine one and four are very located in the same places, so they can make a disulfide bond. And cysteine two and three are very fresh here to make the disulfide bond. This is why we get the ribbon isomer with oxidative folding because this one is the most stable chemically. But uh, for native alpha conotoxin, we know that the right connectivity for alpha conotoxin is between 16, 1 and 3 and 16, 2 and 4. I made the same thing with the gay 1A and it seemed to get the right result that 16, 1 and 3 has the disulfide bond and cysteine two and four has the decision here. So we see that with alpha conotoxin, sometimes it can lead to the ribbon isomer in for oxidative folding, but with regio selective one, we get the right globular isomer, which is the native conotoxins. So after purification, we made a lot of uh, purification to get the, this, the yield of each uh, Result for oxidative folding, it was about more for gay where we obtained seven percent of uh, globular isomer, and for region selective, it was double of the rate of uh, the oxidative folding. It's a uh, it's, uh, it's the same thing for ad -Wene. So with region selective holding, we can afford it to the lay to the globular isomer with a high headed Pot, one pot reaction. So for now, we, we are getting with formal characterization and the preliminary, pre, preliminary result on these two conotoxins shows us that Gaia, Gaia 1A are more potent on muscle type and a nicotinic acetylene receptor than AD1A and AD1A are high affinity on neuronal type NACHR. Here we can see that even with alpha conotoxin, we can target it different type of NACHR. So 
This is why conotoxins are very interesting because they can help us decipher the, the biological activity of uh, this NSCHR through alpha codontoxin. So we, we have a lot of uh, corn snail that endemic from, from French Polynesia that we want to analyze and see their conotoxin to synthesize them and have a biological activity of this uh, conotoxin. So for now, we are just talking about alpha conotoxin, but conotoxin are very interesting molecule that have discipline bond challenges. I would thank, thank you for your assistance and I'm here for you if you have some question or curtis. Thank you. Thank you very much, Azit. Really interesting to see some more chemistry-based oh. um, approaches. Are there any questions from the audience? Yeah, Sidi? Uh, hello, Yazid. So hello. I was just wondering, hello. Um, I was just wondering how you were able to um, confirm with the native that it follows the 1, 3, 2, 4 disulfide gun activity rather than a 1, a 1, 4, 2, 3, or a 1, 2, 3, 4. Thank you. Oh, thank you. So I didn't say it, but I. Generally, for alpha conotoxin, we can have three different isomers. And for alpha conotoxin, the globular one is the main native conotoxin. So I synthesize the three, the three isomers to get to the one conotoxin. But uh, we didn't have the right, we didn't have the conotoxin isolated from the venom. We have just uh, data from protein analysis and determine the globular. We, we know that with alpha conotoxin, the globular one is the one with the right activity. So I synthesized the three isomers and we tested them to see the one who has the right, the high activity is the globular one. It's a response to your cute. Uh, yes, yes, thank you. So you were also able to test the ribbon isomer. Yeah. yeah it I didn't cannot... show any. No, we didn't. Uh, for now, we don't have uh, the result, but the ribbon one is uh, it's not interesting for us because of uh, we know that alpha conotoxin has just only the globular one. But we, we, maybe we have to also test it the ribbon one. We can also test the ribbon and see if they have activity. But uh, in for ADN, for example, the there are also results on the same alpha conduction BU1A that they, they they tested also the ribbon and globular one, and they seems it seems that the globular one have the high activity instead of the ribbon one. So this is why we didn't test it yet the ribbon. Isomers. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Any further questions? Then I have one or maybe two. Just start with first. Um, you said you used the protecting group to yeah. cover the one and three system. How did you make it that they are um, selective for one and three and not covering two and four? Uh, we use this uh, approaches here. We synthesize our conotoxin with ACM protecting group. So with ACM, it's very stable with uh, peptide cytosis. So we cannot remove the ACM without iodine or palladium. So first of all, we synthesize, we, we form the first disulfide bond when we will get sure that we form this disulfide bond. After then, we de protect the ACM with palladium palladium to get uh, after DTC, DTC treatment and DSF, we we are, we were sure that we found just one, the right isomer here. So with, with the regioselective approaches, we can 
control the digital bond formation with this kind of uh, strategies. So you synthesize the conotoxin already with the protected cysteines? Yeah, I synthesize them with protected cysteines. Yeah, okay. And the other question is more general about conotoxins or uh, conosnails toxins. Um, you showed at the beginning that they are nearly only receptor and channel active. Are there any enzymatic toxins known from conotoxins or are they really only going on as peptides on the receptors and the genocides? We don't know because generally conotoxin can target a lot of uh, wide range receptor. I didn't show it, but sometimes they can target it. For example, the, no, the most known conotoxin is the ziconotid who, who, who can target the sodium channels. And when it, it targeted the sodium channel, he can inhibit it, the, the pain from patients. So sometimes it can, for alpha conotoxin, for example, it's uh, targeting NSHR. For mu conotoxin, it can target the sodium channel. It's a very diverse conotoxin. For, it's a, I don't, can you just repeat your question about your... Uh, my question was if there are also other toxins that are not targeting receptors or channels, if there are maybe enzymes in the venom also. Yeah, there are also enzymes in venom, but uh, we didn't... Uh, Okay. For now, I didn't see any result on the enzyme of uh, constant that can show biological activity. 